Do you want to have a natural birth, but you're afraid of the pain? Fear not, you already have everything you need to give birth without drugs, whether you plan on giving birth in a hospital or at home. This is part two, active labor. If you missed the early labor video, I'll link it here. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name's Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom, and I'm currently 33 weeks pregnant with my second baby. I have 13 years of labor support experience between my work as a labor nurse and as a midwife. I've also had a natural birth myself, and this is the advice that I give to my patients at prenatal visits when they want to plan an unmedicated or epidural free birth. This method is simple, free, and anyone can use it. During your pregnancy, you will get countless targeted ads for childbirth classes or programs that promise you that you can have a natural birth without pain. Those ads are trying to sell you something, and what they're selling you is a false promise. I am not going to sugarcoat this for you and tell you that it's not going to hurt. I think that just does you a disservice. It is absolutely going to hurt, but that's okay. It's supposed to. I think that the problem we run into in our culture is the mindset that pain is bad. And to be fair, most of the time it is. If you're being hurt by an external force, say you got hit by a car and you broke several bones, of course you want to eliminate that pain. But with childbirth, the pain is coming from an internal force. Your uterus is creating contractions to help bring your baby into this world. That pain is your power and it is positive. You want to do everything you can to encourage that pain and help it get stronger until you're holding your baby in your arms. That being said, you will need coping mechanisms to help you handle the pain, and that's where this method comes in. There are a lot of options out there for managing your pain, but you have no idea what's going to work for you until you're actually in the throes of labor. There is no one simple trick that works for everyone. This is why we're gonna make a list. If you watched my first video in this series, you may have already started your list with distraction techniques for early labor, but if not, you're going to need something to write on. I have a free downloadable PDF in the description that you can use as a template, but a simple piece of notebook paper will work as well. By the time you turn to this portion of your list, you're likely five to six centimeters dilated and having consistent, painful contractions. Your water may or may not be broken. If you're planning a home birth, you've probably already called your midwife in, and if you're planning a hospital birth, you would likely be at the hospital at this time. You have two options in active labor. You can try and make yourself as comfortable as possible, in which case your labor may take a little bit longer, or you can make an effort to put yourself into positions that are more uncomfortable, in which case things will probably go a little bit more quickly and you'll meet your baby sooner. The midwife that I see for prenatal care has a great metaphor for active labor. She compares it to hiking a mountain. You can either go around and around the mountain, in which case it may take longer but be more tolerable, or you can go straight up the mountain, which will be more grueling but you'll get to your destination faster. Most women will end up doing some combination of the two doing what hurts to try and make progress, but then alternating with positions that are more comfortable when you feel like your body needs a break. Therefore, I think it's a good idea to have options for both on your list. Hydrotherapy is one of the best options for when you feel like your body needs a break. Getting into a tub of warm water can help you through the hardest parts of your labor. I do find that for first-time moms, sometimes getting into the tub can slow things down, but getting into a warm shower usually won't, so that's a good option too. Prior to giving birth myself, I thought I would want to spend my entire labor in the tub, so it was a rude awakening for me when I got into the tub and couldn't get comfortable at all. Fortunately, I did find relief from my next suggestion, gentle touch. I had heard a childbirth educator talk about how having someone just lightly rub your back or touch your arm could be just enough of a pleasant sensation in labor to distract you from contraction pain, and honestly, I thought that was the dumbest thing I had ever heard. I didn't even put it on my list. But that ended up being my primary coping mechanism for most of active labor. I was pretty tired by that point, so I alternated between laying down and sitting up on the couch since laying down I felt more pain and I would sit up when I needed a break. I would have my husband lightly stroke my arm while I was contracting and somehow that gentle distraction got me through the bulk of my contractions. It was so effective that if I started having a contraction and he didn't realize it, I would just go, pet me, so he would start touching my arm again. Having your feet held or squeezed also works really well for some women. Some women find that more pain is a better distraction from contraction pain, which is why some women will squeeze combs when they're in labor. I personally haven't seen this one used a ton, but it does seem to be making a comeback in recent years. I did recently have a patient squeeze combs throughout her labor, and she made it through without an epidural, and I asked her about it afterwards, and she felt like it was extremely effective. 
If you are experiencing back labor, meaning that you're feeling most of your contraction pain in your back, you may want a more aggressive or firm touch or massage in that area. Having your hips squeezed, having your lower back rubbed, or having just counter pressure continuously applied on your lower back can be helpful. Your support person can rub tennis balls on your back in a circular motion, but they can do this with just their hands as well. Your midwife or labor nurse can teach your partner how to do an effective hip squeeze, but essentially it looks like this. They're going to want to push up and squeeze inwards. When it comes to positions that will help you make more progress, you probably won't actually know until you're in active labor and you can see what it feels like for you. Any position that helps increase the amount of pressure you feel in your butt is probably going to help move things along. You may want to try sitting on a birth ball and moving your hips in a circular motion, standing with your arms around a support person and swaying your hips back and forth, or sitting backwards on the toilet. Sitting normally on the toilet can help too, but I find if you're having back labor or things are taking a long time, sitting backwards on the toilet gives you something to lean over and encourages your baby's back to line up with your belly and get into the ideal position for birth. You can also mimic this position by sitting on a birth ball and leaning over your bed or the arm of the couch. If you need a birth ball recommendation, I like this one from TriDeer. I'll drop an affiliate link in the comments. If you're planning to birth in a hospital, they likely have a birth ball for you, but it doesn't hurt to double check. Laying down during active labor gets a bad rep, but for a lot of women, laying on their side will be painful and will help them make progress. If you're exhausted and you need to lay down, it can be helpful to lay in a position that keeps your pelvis open like this. A lot of hospitals will have peanut balls available, which is exactly what it sounds like, a giant yoga ball that looks like a peanut. You can put it between your knees while you're lying down to help keep your pelvis open. If you're at home, pillows work too. You can add anything to your list that you think will help you manage pain, like aromatherapy, visualization techniques, or music. It can be helpful to make a few playlists for labor, so one with more relaxing music for when you want to rest, and one with more upbeat music for when you want to be moving around. If there are other coping techniques that I left out that you think are important, please drop them in the comments for other mamas to see. All of your coping techniques should help you stay in control of your breath. I find that if you get to a place where you start to scream or cry, it can be really hard to come back from that place, and you're much more likely to throw in the towel and ask for drugs. It is okay to make noise, just try to keep your sounds low and keep your mouth loose. Something like this. I can't tell you how many women I have mood with in labor to help them stay in control of their breath. There were also several times when I was in labor with my daughter where my moans would start to get more high-pitched or I would start to swear and my midwife would just go to remind me to bring it back down, which I found extremely helpful. I also find that doing horse lips can be really helpful if you're having a hard time staying in control of your breath. If you are having a hard time staying in control, that means it's time to move to something else on the list. I don't expect you to be cognizant of when that happens, so you should give your list to your primary support person, your partner, your mom, your doula, whoever's going to be with you for the duration of your labor. If you're doing this solo and you don't have a designated support person, you can give your list to your labor nurse or your midwife and let them know that you want them to make suggestions throughout your labor if it seems like you're not coping well. Ideally, your coping techniques will get you to the point where you feel the undeniable urge to push also known as the fetal ejection reflex. When you start pushing and you can't help it, you are fast approaching the finish line, and usually you will be holding your baby sometime in the next hour. Usually. Not everyone likes pushing, but I find a lot of women cope better when they get to the point where they can push because they feel like they're doing something and they know they're almost done. I personally felt like it hurt a lot less once I was able to push. This is the point of no return in most hospitals, meaning that if you haven't gotten an epidural yet, it's too late now. I'm not going to spend time talking about pushing in this video because if you're truly experiencing that overwhelming urge to push, your body is going to take over. Much like with the rest of labor, you aren't going to know what actually feels right until you're physically doing it. Please let me know if your due date is coming up. I will say a prayer for you and send some general positive vibes in your direction. I wish you the best of luck with your birth and I hope you bring your baby into this world in a way that makes you feel empowered. Next time, we're going to talk about what to do if you experience prodromal labor, so early labor that goes on and on and on. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss that video. Thank you so much for watching.